Fab. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We worship you. We magnify your throne. We thank you for everything that, Lord, you have done for us, O oh God. For there is none like you. I am that I am is your name. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, we say we thank you in the name of Jesus. We receive your glory, O oh God. You say your glory you do not share with anybody. Father, I just want to say I thank you for your blessings upon our lives. I thank you for an opportunity, oh God, like this, where we can come into thy presence. Oh, for there is none like you, oh God. Kataya, setele, bekele, bekaya, bibeteye, setele, I worship you. I thank you for giving us life. I thank you for giving us breath. I thank you for counting us among the living ones, oh God. Father, you have been grateful unto us, oh God, for your word says that your mercies are renewed everybody in the mighty name of Jesus. Today being the March of um, the 20th, 2019 oh lord what can we say all that we can say is father we thank you we cannot pay you back we cannot give back what you have done for us we went to sleep like a log lying on our beds but father your graciousness and your mercies you made your angels to take charge over us and they were there to keep us. All that we can say is, Father, we thank you. Hallowed be thy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, O God. Oh, yes, Lord. Enter la baka baba wherever you are just lift up your words and begin to thank him i just want you to think about his blessings i just want you to think about his goodness i just want you to think about his faithfulness in the mighty name of jesus there are many times that we are, we, we 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 are unfaithful but lord through his mercies he just overrides that because we are his children. Because you and I are children of God. Therefore, he continues to uphold us. Therefore, he continues to bless us. Therefore, he continues to, to, to shower his blessings and his mercies unto us, O God. Father, therefore, we just want to say we well, thank you and we we'll bless your holy name, O God. Dearly beloved, my name is Eric, God's servant. And uh, uh, today's program, and as it has always been, is Word and Spirit. It is a program which we design and we come to you uh, and we go into the word of God. We study the word of God because the Bible makes us understand that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall forever remain. Therefore, just as when you are traveling elsewhere, you always need the GPS to make sure that you are going to the right position, uh, the, 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 the right place, just as it is when it comes to the word of God, that we always need the word of God, because it is the word of God which is always our guide. It is the word of God which will always keep us. Sometimes you hear people saying that, how can I walk in the will of God? Beloved, the will of God is the word of God. So once you study the word of God, it is what we need in order to lead you. It is what you need in order to guide you. Hallelujah. So let's go straight into the Bible. But before that, I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We thank you for a time like this where we have come into your presence to learn your word, to study your word, to have a revelation and understanding so far as your word is concerned. We pray that you open the eyes of our understanding that we may know and we will understand what you had for us this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So wherever you are, beloved, I want us to open our Bibles again and go into the word of god and uh as i always say this is a series it is a series which we've started i think for the past four weeks yes and uh the topic for our discussion or our studies has been power in the message of the gospel power in the message of the gospel and our foundational scripture um has been first corinthians chapter 2 reading from the verse 1 2 3 4 and 5 First Corinthians chapter 2, reading from the verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's go straight into the word of God and believe God for supernatural understanding. The verse 1 says that, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. This is verse 1. Now the verse 2 says that, For I determined not to know anything among you, Accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. The verse 3 says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much troubling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. And the verse 5 says that, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. The verse 5 again. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is a letter that, uh, which Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And he told them that when I decided to come to you, I had one thing in mind. He said that for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That was Apostle Paul's vision. That was Apostle Paul's mission. That was the reason why he went to the church in Corinth. And he said that in my coming, I did not come to, to you to speak to you about words that you should know. I came that the reason of my message to you is that you will know Christ. Hallelujah. Because most of the times when we go to the church and we try to speak about words, that would be nice. That would be so beautiful in the ears of the Corinthians. What happens is that their faith is never built on the word of God. Their faith is not built on the power of God. Because at the end of the day, in terms of circumstances, when they are in terms of difficulties, when things are not working right, they don't have any foundation to dwell their faith on. Hallelujah. Because in terms of difficulties, you see, God never promised us that the life will be rosary. God never promised us. Because one thing that I know for sure in the Bible. Is that if you read the book of John chapter 17. When he was praying to his father. One of the last messages. Or one of the prayers that he prayed to his father. Is that this ones I commit unto you. They are in this world. They are in this world presently. They are residing in this world. However, that is now their dwelling place. So he was telling his father that there's going to be a time that these people that I have been able to groom together, there will be a time that they will come to you. But for now, they are, on, they are in this world. Hallelujah. And as we all know, it's the Bible message understand that Satan is the God of this world. Hallelujah. Therefore, as we live in this world, there are issues that you and I will go through. But what will keep us going, what will keep us assured is that when our faith is built on the solid rock of Christ, hallelujah. If you and I, our faith is built on the solid rock of Christ, whenever we are going through difficulties, whenever we are going through challenges, we know that our faith is built on Christ who will never disappoint us, hallelujah. I love what Apostle Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12. He said that even though I go through some afflictions, even though I go through some troubles in life, I am never, never worried because I am persuaded knowing whom I have built my faith on. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul could say that even though he goes through troubles here and there, he's never troubled because he's persuaded knowing whom he had believed. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, you want to ask yourself, where does your faith lie? Is your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? If you can boldly say that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can gladly say with Paul that even though you have to go through certain afflictions in life, yes, still you are persuaded knowing whom you have knelt or you have put your trust in. Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul is saying that, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. But in demonstration of spirit and of power. Hallelujah. In demonstration of spirit and of power. So for some time now we've been building, uh, sorry, we've been building our point on. And last week we went into another scripture. Hallelujah. And we read something from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Reading from the verse 1 to 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Read it from the verse 1 to 10. So let's look at what the Bible tells us. In fact, this is a letter which was written by Paul, um, Silvanus, and Timothy. Hallelujah. The three of them wrote this letter to the church in Thessalonica. Hallelujah. So let's read what the word of God tells us. He said that Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The verse 2. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your faith, your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, know ye, beloved brethren, your election by God. Hallelujah. And look at the verse 5. He says that for our gospel, 
For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were. Hallelujah. So last week we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from the verse 1 to 5. So the verse 5 said that for our gospel did not come to you in word only. This is Paul speaking. But also in power and in the Holy Spirit. My goodness. And in much assurance to you. Know that the kind of men that we presented ourselves to you, we are of a different class. Hallelujah. This is what Apostle Paul is saying. Apostle Paul is making reference to the fact that he is a man of integrity. They were men of integrity. Paul. Timothy and Silvanus, they were men of integrity in that they did not come to speak to them of a different subject, whereas their life and their attitude were also different. Hallelujah. Because you cannot preach about something which you do the opposite or the likewise. Hallelujah. In other words, you cannot have a dual life. If you are a preacher who stands behind the pulpit and you preach something different than what you exhibited to the people, then there is a problem. If you behave that way, then you are actually a hypocrite. So Paul is saying that the same way as we present our lives to you, our lifestyle, our character, our way of life, our day-to-day -day activity, in line of that, you should know that when we came to you, we presented to you a particular gospel. Hallelujah. In fact, Apostle Paul was able to personalize the gospel or the message and he referred to them as our gospel. In other words, he was saying that the message that I, that Timothy and Silvanus were presented to you, we have termed it or we have classified it as our gospel. Now the question is, at what point could a minister or at what point could a preacher of the gospel classify the message that he's speaking to the people as his gospel? It could only be in a situation where you have believed the message yourself. I cannot come to preach to you about salvation when I myself am not born again. I cannot come to preach to you about salvation when I myself, I don't believe in the message that I'm preaching to you. Hallelujah. So Paul was saying that our gospel, for our gospel did not come to you in word only. That's what he's saying. But also in power. Amen. So he was able to say that when the message of the gospel which was preached to the church, they came in forms. They came in categories. <laughs> they came in so many dimensions. So that one, they came in power. Two, they came in the Holy Spirit. And three, they came in much assurance. Hallelujah. So last week, we talked about the power. Amen. And we read something from Hebrews chapter 4, reading from the verse 12 to 13. It said that, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thought and intent of the heart. Hallelujah. This is, what Paul, this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that the gospel that was preached to them came in three categories or forms. It came in the power. When it came in the Holy Spirit. And it also came in much assurance. Look at the verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. To whom we must give account. Hallelujah. Now, the word of God in this particular scripture is the Logos. The Logos is the express idea of the, the church of God. And Bible says that, John chapter 1 makes us understand that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And Bible says that in the verse, first that, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Hallelujah. So the word of God that we are talking about in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 is the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because the verse 13 says that this word now has eyes. And therefore nothing could be hidden. And besides that, that we shall give accounts of our things to this particular creature. Hallelujah. There is nothing on this earth, nothing that can be done, nothing that can be hidden when it comes to our daily activities. Everything that you do shall be subject to the word of God. So the question is, if you want to do something, if you want to take a decision in life, the question that you need to ask yourself is that, does this conform to what the word of God is saying? 
if you go into the Bible, what you are about to do, you see, the Bible was written so many years before many of us were, were born. In fact, all of us were born. But yesterday, I can tell you for a fact that there is no aspect of human life that cannot be found in the Bible. The Bible contains everything. You don't talk about marriage, talk about business, if you talk about child bring, talk about anything that you can even think about. Those things are things pertaining to our human life, and all of them can be found in the Bible. So the verse 13 it says that and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hallelujah. That's what the word of God is saying. So we are saying that the word of God is too powerful. The Bible says that it is also sharper. And it is this two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. And it has the capability of discerning into the thoughts and intent of our hearts. The way we think. The way we behave. So the word of God has as always and will always be subjected to what the, the Bible is saying. So ask yourself this question. If there is something that you want to embark on, what does the word of God say? So the writer in the book of Hebrews is trying to let us understand that the word of God is powerful. The word of God is not dead. The word of God has life. And because the word of God has life, whoever hears the word of God, if a sinner hears the word of God, which Apostle Paul refers to it in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 8 as the word of faith, when a sinner hears the word of faith, which is the message of the gospel, because the word of God is sharper and because the word of God is powerful, it has the capability of converting a sinner into a child of God. Hallelujah. This is how powerful the word of God is. When the word of God is preached, it has the capability of one, converting a spiritually dead person. The well, Bible says that just as Adam and Eve sinned and sin came into this world, all of us have sinned and will fall short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, once we are under the human race of Adam, every sinner or every human being, but that is why you see, it is, this is so amazing. It is so much amazing to the standard you don't have to teach a child how to lie. The, church, the child automatically can easily lie you. You tend to ask yourself, who even taught him how to do this? Who even taught him how to do this? But they are able to do that because of the nature, because of how sin came into this world. Hallelujah. And Bible said that because of that, you see, when the word of God is preached, it has the capability. When the word of God is preached and you hear the word of God, it's able to convert a spiritually dead purple person. And bring him into life. The well, Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. So that behold, all things are passed away. Therefore, you are now a new being. Now there is this part of the scripture that I love so much. So that you are a new creation. <laughs> a new means you are new. The Bible did not say that you have been remolded. The Bible did not say that you have been adjusted. The Bible did not say that you have been refurbished, but the Bible said that you are a new creation. What does that mean? Now, when the Bible said that all things are passed away, what it is trying to say that you are no longer of the past anymore. The things of the past do not ever belong to you anymore. The things of the sin, you are not no, you are no longer under the bondage of sin. You are no longer under the control of sin. Hallelujah. Now you are under the control of the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that if any man is in Christ, now the things of the past, you are no longer controlled by Satan anymore. In fact, I have a good news for you. Now the three things that happens when Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead was the one we were broken under the domain of Satan. Because every natural man without Christ, it is Satan who controls you. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse says that, For we, we were dead in our sins and in trespasses. Bible says that we were controlled about, uh, uh, under the prince, by the prince of this world, who controls and enlists us. So that the natural man who is without God is always under the influence of Satan. But immediately you give your life to Christ, you are no longer under the domain of Satan anymore. Hallelujah. Now you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Now the two things that also applies to you is that one, you are also under the new creation of a man. You have been redeemed. 
You are not a child of God. Hallelujah. So Paul was saying that now this word, that is who you are. That power, which is in the word of God, is able to change you. Now the same power, the power which is in the word of God, also has the capability of doing miracles. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ says something in the book of John chapter 7, verse 63. Therefore, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The miracles that Jesus Christ did during his three and a half ministry on this earth were all as a result of the word, the powerful word that came out of his mouth. Hallelujah. For he said that I have or I can of myself do anything. As I hear, so I speak. Which means that as he hears his father tells him all the miracles that he was doing. When he see the dead and he was able to raise, he just told them, come out. Look at the example of Lazarus. Bible said that when Jesus Christ went to the tomb, he just said that Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came. All these things were as a result of the word. So all that we are trying to say this afternoon is that there is power in the message of the gospel. What that is the gospel? The gospel is about one person. The gospel is a testimony of Jesus Christ. The Bible from Genesis all to Revelation talks about one message. And that is the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when we say the gospel, the message of the gospel, all that the Bible is referring to is that Christ died and he was buried. And in the third day, Christ resurrected again. Hallelujah. That is the message of the gospel. So what the message of the gospel is preached is able to turn that. Now, we also talked about the fact that be said that as Paul, Silvanus and Timothy wrote to the church, he also said that there is also another aspect of the word of God when it's being preached. It also comes in the form of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that is what I want us to center today. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit aspect. And as I, I began from the beginning, this is a series. It is something which we have to continue. So we have to build on gradually. Last, for the past, I think, two weeks, we'll be talking about the power in the message of the gospel. And we make reference to, we made reference to second, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from the verse 1 to 10. And we said that the verse 5 says that the, 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 the gospel, our gospel which was preached, did not come to you in word only. But it came in power and in the Holy Spirit. So today I want us to go into our Bibles and look at the Holy Spirit in line with the power, which is the message of the gospel. Hallelujah. Now, the primary role of the Holy Spirit is the role of conviction. This is very important. The role of the Holy Spirit is to convict us. Let's open our Bibles and look at John chapter 16. Read it from the verse 4. John chapter 16. We are looking at the role of the Holy Spirit in connection to the power in the message of the gospel. The role of the Holy Spirit. And I said that the first role of the Holy Spirit is that it has the power to convict us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. It convicts the sinner. So we are reading something from John chapter 16. John chapter 16. And let's look at the verse 4. But these things I have told you. This is Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples. And when he was preparing them, when he was about to go to the cross, hallelujah. This is what he said. He said, about these things I have told you, that when the time comes, say, these things I've told you, when the time comes, hallelujah. He said, for these things I have told you, that when the time comes, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning. Because I was with you. Hallelujah. Now the verse 5. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Hallelujah. Now the verse 7. Say that, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I would send him. The verse 8. And when he has come, he will convict the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus Christ is saying. Jesus Christ is saying that it is of a good advantage that I go. But when I go, I will send forth the comforter, the helper. And when he comes, he will convict the word of sin. This is very important. That is the first role of the Holy Spirit. 
to convict us. Bible said that in the book of John 3, it said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. The eternal life shall only come to you whenever there is a conviction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is the first rule. So as you go out to speak for the word, even as we are studying the word of God right now, what the Holy Spirit is doing right now, he is convicting us. He was he is speaking to us. The Holy Spirit has the power and the capability of convicting the sinner of sin to give his life to Christ. This is very important. Hallelujah. Then he went on to say that, now after he has said this, now it is very clear to you and I to understand that the salvation that you and I have is not of any works. You and I did not do anything to merit this salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and I said that, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. The verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the work of salvation is by the cardinal conversion of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit which takes the word which is being preached to you. There is power in the Holy in, in, in the Word of God. So as you hear the Holy the Word of God preach, now the Holy Spirit convict us by letting us know that we need to give our life to Christ. Hallelujah. This is very important. Now let's look at the verse. The verse 12 of the same chapter 16. So that I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. This is Christ speaking. I have so many things to say to you. But then his disciples were not born again. Chapter 16, they were not born again of John. He was preparing them. In fact, he started preparing them from the chapter 13 of the book John. How did I know that? The verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own, own who were in the world he loved them to end, to the end they said that now before the feast of the pa passover when jesus christ knew that his hour has come so from the chapter 13 the chapter 14 the 15 the 16 onwards till he got crucified on the cross he was preparing his disciples so he was speaking to them that it is of a good advantage that i live that when I leave and I go, the helper, which is the Holy Spirit, will come. Hallelujah. If, in fact, if you read the book of, if you read the chapter 14, it talks about the fact that it is Christ himself that came back to us as the Holy Spirit. And he said that it is the Holy Spirit who will convict you of your sins. And once it's convict you of your sins, then you give your life to Christ. So the power which is in the message of the gospel, in light with the word of the Holy Spirit, is that it is going to convict the word of sins. Hallelujah. Now, he as, he, as he's able to do that, now the verse 12 is telling us that I still have many things to say. This is the same Christ speaking to them. But you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, now this is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. When he comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Hallelujah. Another rule of the Holy Spirit, as the word of God is being revealed to us. Bible said that he said that as the, I go and the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus Christ is now labeling the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. He said that he will not say of his own authority. Therefore, the role of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Christ. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit cannot do anything. What he's doing that, he's exposing us to Christ. He's revealing things deeper in the, in the spirit unto us. Look at the verse 14. But he said that he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. He will take what is of mine and he will declare it unto you. Hallelujah. He will declare what is mine, what belongs to me, and he will now expose it unto you. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at another scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's start reading from the verse 7. He said that, but we speak the wisdom of God. This is Paul. We are trying to look at the other aspects of the gospel message. 
one, we said that it has power to bring about salvation. Now, we are also saying that now the Holy Spirit also has a role to play in doing that. Now, we are reading something from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from the verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. The verse 8. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men things which God has prepared for those who love him. The verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirits. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. That is another rule of the Holy Spirit. But I say that for the spirit searches all things. There are deep things that you and I we don't know. There are deep things that you and I need to know. But Bible says that the role of the Holy Spirit in us as believers is that he has the capability of searching the deep things of God. There are things that are deep. There are things that are pertaining to the children of God. There are things that the Holy Spirit only knows. And Bible is saying that the Holy Spirit searches deep things and he reveals unto us. Look at the verse 11. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him. My goodness. Now, this is what it is. When you, when, when you give your life to Christ, Bible says that your spirit becomes regenerated or recreated. Then again, the component of man is that man is a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Man is a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Therefore, your spirit is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So therefore, this is what happens. When you give your life to Christ, Bible says that your spirit becomes recreated. Your spirit, which was spiritually dead as a result of sin, once you hear the message of the gospel, you become born again. Now, what happens? Once you become born again, the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says that now once you hear the word of God and you believe, you are being sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what happens. Now, the Holy Spirit now becomes one with your spirit. And therefore, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17, that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. This is very important. Now, when you give your life to Christ and you are joined with the Lord, you are one with the person. You are one with the, with, the, with the Holy Spirit. That is who you are now. So when that happens, what happens is that now your life begins to be governed by the Holy Spirit. The book of Proverbs says, says that now the spirit of man is the kernel of the Lord. What does that mean? Because now you are spiritually active, now the Holy Spirit leads you. Now, let's take our minds back and learn something here. Now, before Adam and Eve sinned against God, they were spirit beings. They were immortal. They did not know sin. That was the point where God could, in the cool of the day, that is when God could go into the garden and had fellowship with them. Hallelujah. In fact, the purpose for which God created man is so that we can have fellowship. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 says that for God has given us that ability to have fellowship with his son. That was the primary role of God. That was the primary reason of God when he, was, when he created man. It's so that we could have fellowship. Why? Because God himself is a spirit. And we were also spirit. We were spiritually active until sin came into this world through Adam. Hallelujah. Therefore, immediately man sinned against God. Now man became spiritually dead. And that kind of fellowship that God had with man, God broke it. Therefore, because the man wanted to satisfy his role or his affairs, now man became controlled or kept under the control of our senses. This is very important. Now, man became controlled by our senses. Our sense of touch, our sense of, uh, 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 um, of feeling, what we can see, what we can touch, and what we can taste, hallelujah. Our five senses, this is very important. So everybody who has not given his life to Christ, you are being controlled by what you see. You are being controlled by what you touch. Your eyes, what you touch, 
what you feel, our five senses begin to control us. Hallelujah. So when you give your life to Christ, what happens is that your spirit, which is spiritually dead, now becomes recreated. And now you become a child of God. You now become a born again, born of the spirit. And when that becomes possible, then your life now begins to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. This is very important. The spirit of man is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, God begins to lead you. The Holy Spirit begins to guide you. The Holy Spirit now which lives in your spirit begins to guide you. Now, what happens here? Watch this. This is what happens. Now, because of our soul, which is made up of our mind, which is made up of our will and our emotions, your mind now is corrupted because of the things which you were under. Because of the things which you were controlled by your senses. Now, what happens is that now your spirit is not in harmony with your mind. Therefore, Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that we have to be transformed by the renewing of our, word, our mind. This is very important. How do we do that? We do that by studying the word of God. As you begin to study the word of God day in and day out, as you begin to study the word of God in the morning, as you study the word of God all the time, then gradually what happens is that your mind which is being corrupted is becoming now renewed gradually. But here is the catch. Your mind does not become renewed in the day. It takes time. That is why Apostle Peter said that as you newborn babies, you have to desire the sincere milk of the word. So as you continue to study the word, as you continue to feed on the word of God, then you begin to grow. Then you begin to grow gradually, begin to grow gradually. Now the Holy Spirit now begins to give you revelation and deeper understanding when it comes to the things of God. Hallelujah. That is why a natural man cannot understand the things of God. The natural man does not understand spiritual things because you are spiritually dead. You are being controlled by the spirit of this world, which is Satan. Your affairs are being ruled. That is why it is so much dangerous when you are dealing with a natural man, an unbeliever. Why? Because the book of Romans chapter 6 said that now the natural man or the one who is not giving his life to Christ is now in enmity with the faith of God. The teach of God does not appeal to a natural man anymore. The teach of God does not appeal to an unbeliever, an unbeliever before be, anymore. Why? Because he or she does not understand the teach of the spirit. Hallelujah. So what we are saying is that now there is power in the message of the gospel. In that as the message of the gospel is being preached or as we read the word of God, now the Holy Spirit begins to give us spiritual understanding. Because the verse 10 says that, but God has revealed things to us through what? His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. The Holy Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Our God is all-knowing. We are limited in our knowing. We don't know everything. Bible says that for God knows everything. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, He knows everything because He created everything. Therefore, there are so much deep things which are in the things of, uh, uh, which are pertaining to our life, that the Holy Spirit is able to let us know that. Hallelujah. So that the verse, verse, let me say that, for what man knows the things of man, except the spirit of man, which is in him. Hallelujah. What are we saying here? We are saying that a believer, or someone who has given his life to Christ, is now controlled by the Holy Spirit. Now, we begin to ask ourselves this question. Why do I get so many thoughts? Why do I sometimes things begin to reflect in our mind? You see, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 14. No, chapter, chapter 40 verses 10. It said that for there are, there may be so many voices, but none of them is without signification. What does that mean? There are so many voices that speak to us. The voice of our flesh. Don't forget, I said that man is a spirit, has a soul, and he lives in a body. So now, your body is just a container, which is housing you the spirit. Now, once you are the spirit, now the mind, which is also part of the soul, is also there. Now, the, the voice of the mind also speaks to you because of the things that you see around you all the time. So the question is, how can I be controlled fully by the Holy Spirit, which is within me? You can be controlled by having your 
quiet time and study the word of God gradually. Now, what do you do? You don't just read it. You study it. Now, as you study, what do you do? You begin to think about the word of God. You begin to think about the word of God. You begin to meditate on the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. All the time, you have to study the word of God. As you are studying the word of God, now the word of God becomes applicable to you. You become the doer of the word. James said that we have to be the doer of the word and not just the listeners. If you read the word of God, now you put yourself in the word of God. You begin to ask yourself, what does this word tell me? What is the meaning of this word? What a revelation am I getting it from, from, from the word? And the good news that I have for you also is that the word of God is the author. The author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Bible says that for those who wrote the Bible, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit to wrote, I'm sorry, to write the Bible. So as they read the Bible, they were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? As you sit down to study the word of God, now the Holy Spirit begins to communicate to you because you are a spirit. This is very deep. I want you to get an understanding. As you begin to study the word of God, as you begin to read the word of God right now, now because you are a spirit, now the Holy Spirit begins to give you revelation because the Holy Spirit is the writer or is the author of the Bible. Now we're talking about spiritual things. Now you begin to engage yourself. Now the Holy Spirit begins to give you understanding. For the Bible will say that there are deep things which are in the Bible and the only way you can have access to those deep things are through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, this is very deep. Therefore, how can I attain this? I can attain this by reading the word of God all the time. I can attain this by having my daily quiet time. I can attain this by studying this. Why? Because your spirit has to grow in the Lord. Your spirit has to grow in the Lord. Once you give your life to Christ, you are a newborn child. It doesn't matter your age. I'm not talking about your, your physical age. You can be very old physically, but spiritually you can be a baby. Why? Because the word of God makes you understand that your spirit has to grow. And it can only grow by being involved in spiritual things. And one of them is by studying the word of God. And what is the role of the Holy Spirit? As you spend time studying the word of God, as you spend time going into the Bible, as you spend time having your quiet time, and not just reading the Bible, but also meditating and applying it, it, it to your life, then you begin to grow gradually. You begin to grow gradually. You begin to grow. They begin to feed your spirit. You begin to grow in the spirit. Now, it's so amazing. You realize that we spend time polishing this body. We spend time going to the gym. They are all very important. You want to be in good shape. It's very good. Nobody is saying that you shouldn't exercise. But just as we spend time going to the gym, just as we spend time exercising, just as we spend time trying to beautify this body, the same way we need to spend time and feed our spirit. Hallelujah. Because when we die now, the most important thing is that our spirit, hallelujah. Now, you see, Jesus Christ uh, uh, was explaining something uh, yeah, to the Jews in the book of Mark. And they came to him and said that in the book of the law, according to Moses, he said that when someone marries and the husband dies and without a child, what, what should they do? And Jesus Christ told them that it doesn't matter if the husband if, if the husband died without them having no child, now the brother should marry the wife and also see if they can have a child. And they kept asking questions and said, what of if for so many times there is no child? Now, when they go to heaven, what happens? And this is what Jesus Christ told the Jews. He said that in heaven we shall be like angels. What is Christ saying? What he's trying to say is that in heaven there is nothing like your flesh. It is just about your spirit. Hallelujah. Therefore, if it is just by your spirit, then why don't you spend time feeding the spirit, which is of much importance. When we die, we will go into the earth. When we die, 
Bible says that from we shall be at rest. Now, when we are at rest, this body, this flesh, it decays. That's why most of the times you hear people, from earth I came, earth shall we go back again. Now, this flesh, it goes back into the ground. It decays. Now, Bible says that your spirit now resurrects. Hallelujah. Therefore, if it is your spirit that is going to resurrect, it is your spirit that will face judgment, irrespective of where you belong to. Because Christians are also going to be judged. Hallelujah. Now, the question is, if that is the case, then why don't I think about things pertaining to my spirit? Why don't I spend time reading the word of God? Why don't I spend time having my quiet time? Why don't I spend time feeding the faith of the spirit? Because after all, I am a spirit. Beloved, this is very important. If you are a spirit, then why don't you desire the things of the spirit? Why don't you desire the things of the spirit? Because as much as you desire the things of the spirit, now you begin to grow in the Lord. Now you begin to grow. Now you begin to grow gradually. Now the things of the spirit now becomes important to you. Because you begin to grow gradually. Hallelujah. Once you begin to grow gradually, then you are increasing the taste of the spirit. Then you are growing. Now you don't, don't struggle anymore. Because what you have done is that you have spent time in his presence. Hallelujah. You have spent time growing your spirit. You have spent time maturing. Hallelujah. You have to mature. Hallelujah. And the church has a role to play. The church has a role to play. You also have a church, uh, sorry, a role to play. That is why I find it so difficult to understand it. This, that if you find yourself in a church where the word of God is not being preached, where the gospel of the message is not being preached, where the features is not centered on Christ, then there's a problem. Hallelujah. I see it as a big problem. Because at the end of the day, you need to grow in the Lord. Because if you need to grow in the Lord, then it is very important to dwell or be in an environment where the word of God can be preached, where you can learn and grow in things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Watch this. It is so amazing. If you read the book of Ephesians chapter 4, Bible said that when Christ resurrected from the death, when he was going back to his father, so amazing. Bible says that he gives gifts to the church. Hallelujah. He gave them gifts. Let's ask, ask ourselves, why did he give the church this gift? Bible says that for he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. Some evangelists. Some prophets. And he gave some also features. And Bible says that the reason why Christ gave this gift to the church is so that they will train the, the sheep so that they will grow in the Lord. So that one, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification for the body of Christ. Three things, to perfect the saints. These are the reasons why Christ gave the gift to the church. Hallelujah. Now think about this. Ask yourself this question. Why didn't Christ give the church any other thing? Because Christ knew that now the body, he is the head, and the body is the church. Therefore, it was time for him to go back to his father. And therefore, before he could go back to the father, he needs to equip the body of Christ, that is his body, the church, with this spiritual gift. Hallelujah. So he gave us, he gave the church pastors, he gave them prophets, he gave them evangelists, he gave them pastors, he gave them teachers, so that one, they could now train us, hallelujah, to perfect the saints. Now, to perfect the saints means that so that they will become matured in the things of God, hallelujah. Therefore, I find it so strange if you should sit under the feet of someone who cannot feed you the word of God. If you, can, if you, if you cannot sit under the feet, except if the place is not a, an environment where you can grow in the Lord, why do you have to spend your time sitting there, hallelujah? That is the rule. Now, the fact that, is it, is it, if you read the other scriptures, so that the reason why it is so important, so that we will not be tossed to and fro, and we will all grow in the Lord, and we will attain the state of Christ, hallelujah. Beloved, that is the rule. That is what Christ gave to the church, that we will grow, that we will be equipped. Now, once you become matured, matured in the things of God, 
Now you have the desire to do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Now, the first thing, to perfect the saints. <laughs> After you are perfected, now you can do the work of the ministry. As you do the work of the ministry, now the whole body of Christ can be edified. Now, here's the thing. As you grow in the Lord, as I grow in the Lord, now there will be the desire. Now, I will come to a point of knowing that once I am matured in the things of God, then I can also help and help the work of the ministry to go on. Now, I began to preach. You also go ahead and do evangelism. Then what are we doing? Now, at the end of the day, the five ministerial gift which was given to the church will now edify the body of Christ. Because now we have pastors in, in the church who are supposed to govern in the church. We have the prophets who are also there. We have the evangelists who are also there. And we also have the features of the gospel. Hallelujah. It's a gift that Christ gave to the church. Hallelujah. This is very important, beloved. Why would you sit in, a, in, in, in an environment? Why would you sit in a church where the word of God is not preached? Why would you sit in a church where the word of God is not preached? Why, is it, why do you sit in a church where the message is not centered on the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Beloved, the word is coming to an end. Now, in the olden days, it was so, so simple. Now, it was so difficult to see the young dying. But now it doesn't happen anymore. Now you, you realize that even in your home, even in your hometown, even in your environment, we have grown up people who are so old, but they are still living. Now we have the young ones going. The amazing thing that is now, if you go under a tree, you can see the dry leaves and you can see the, the green leaves. All of these leaves are falling. This tells us something, that the world is coming to an end. Soon and very soon, Jesus Christ is coming back. Where will you be? Hallelujah. The message of the gospel. There is always power in the message of the gospel. Hallelujah. So we learned that now the Holy Spirit also has a role to play. And the role of the Holy Spirit is to want to convict us. To convict the sinner of your wrongdoings to now to convert you to Christ. And beside that, the role of the Holy Spirit is also to reveal things to us. There are deep things that we need to know. Hallelujah. If you read the Bible, it says that for now, there is no more condemnation. To those who are in, in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that there are good things. There are good things that are ours. You see, these things are ours for us on this earth. You don't have to wait and die before you enjoy those good things. You are a child of God. And it's the role of the Holy Spirit to revolve these good things which our Father has in store for us. That is why I love Apostle Paul so much. When he wrote, to the, uh, when he wrote a letter to the church in Ephesians. He said that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation. It is the spirit that you need to understand. Once you have this Holy Spirit living in you, beloved, it begins to direct you. But then, we need to bring down certain spirit that competes with the Holy Spirit. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 10. It says that for there are, it may be, so many voices, but none of them is without signification. Let me give you this scenario. Just imagine seeing yourself in a, a room where you have so many radio stations on at the same time. Which frequency can you listen? You'll be confused. Why? Because you have this speaking to you, the other one speaking to you. But let's look at this. What if, if you decide to, 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 now, to now off all the other radios and just have one on? What happens? Now you begin to hear what that radio uh, 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 is saying the program that the, that radio is saying why because you've been able to shut all those things down that is why it's very important to tame the things which are not of the spirit and be involved in the things of the spirit as you begin to do that daily daily how do you do that you do that by studying the word of god hallelujah you do that by reading the word of god and as you continue to do that now your spirit begins to grow as, you be, as your spirit begins to grow, now it begins to tame that of the flesh. Hallelujah. As you begin to tame that, that of the flesh, now it begins to grow in the things of God and you begin to desire the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Today, I want to bring my, 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 my message to an end today. I told you that it's a series that I've embarked on. I'm not done yet. Goodness week, God willing, we'll go to the other aspect of it. Now, Apostle Paul wrote to the church. We read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Read it from the verse 1 to 10. And I dwelt today's message on the verse 5. 
Apostle Paul said that the message that the message of the gospel which they gave to the church in Thessalonica, it did not come in the word only, but it came in power. It came in the Holy Spirit and also came in much assurance. Hallelujah. This is very important. It came in the power. It came in the Holy Spirit and it came in much assurance. Now, if you read the preceding verse, it says something so much important that I want you to take your time and read those parts. It talks about the fact that because of that, they are no longer babies. They are, no, they are now disciples in the Lord. As you read the word of God, as you grow in the word of God, as you study it, as you equip yourself, you begin to grow and you no longer become a baby. You now become a disciple. You become somebody who has now grown in the church of God and you can also go out and go and preach the message to other people. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord guide you. May the Lord lead you. I pray that may the Lord open the eyes of your understanding that you will know this in Jesus' mighty name. Now, before I leave, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Maybe you are hearing my voice. You are sick in any part of your body. I want you to believe something before I pray. That sickness is spiritual. Sickness, disease, they are spiritual. Bible said that for every good and every perfect thing comes from above. God, our Father, will not give his children sickness. Hallelujah. The same way you will not give anything back to your child on this earth. God will also not give sickness to you. Therefore, I want you to understand that sickness or disease, they are things of the spirit and they are spiritual. Hallelujah. Therefore, I want to pray for you. I want you to believe this. If you are sick in any part of your body, right now, as I speak unto you, I want you to lay your hands on those areas. Just put your hands on it and let's, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of infirmity right now to leave the body of anybody who is hearing me right now in the name of Jesus. Your spirit of fiber, I command you to go out now. Your spirit of hypertension, I command you right now. Your spirit of cancer, I command you right now. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that in the name of Jesus, come out of the body in the name of Jesus. That is not your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand that you are healed. Just believe it. It has been commanded right now. So if any sickness, if you are, you are listening to me right now, if you are not able to do something, I want you to begin to do it right now. If you are not able to walk, I want you to begin to walk right now. If you are not able to, to sit, I want you to sit right now. I command every spirit, every sickness, any spirit behind any sickness right now, I want you to understand that you are out and leave the body in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to pray for you. Maybe you are hearing the sound of my voice. You are believing God for supernatural breakthrough. You are believing God for a child. You are believing God for a husband. You are believing God for a wife. You are believing God for a job. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for these ones who are hearing me. That Father, may every door that is closed in their lives, oh God, as you give laughter to Sarah, as you fill them with joy, I pray that may you fill them with joy right now. May every door that is closed be open. May those who are believing you for job, may they receive their job. May those who are believing for immigration breakthrough, may they receive it right now. May you search the heart of every person and fill them with joy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And final, finally, I want to say this. That maybe you are hearing me. You have not received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Beloved, what I'm talking to you, it, they are things of the Spirit. You wouldn't even understand. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Remember I started by saying. That the natural man or the unbeliever. Does not understand, understand the things of the spirit. Now you want to receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And you want to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus I come before your throne. I believe that I'm a sinner. I come. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me with our blood. And write my name in the Lamb books of life. Satan, I denounce you now that I don't have anything to do with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, if you have also prayed this prayer after me, I want you to understand that you are now a born-again Christian. Now, the good news that I have for you is that because of you, now the host of angels in heaven, they are rejoicing because a soul has been won. Beloved, God loves you. Now, I want you to understand that again that it's a spiritual thing. It's the affairs of the spirit. Now your spirit has been recreated. Now the good is that, that you are now a child of God. Your name has been changed. Now your name has been written in the, in the Lamb's book of life. 
Now you can call God your father. God bless you. Now, I want you to do one thing. I want you to find yourself a Bible-believing church where you can be taught the word of God. I want you to join a church wherever you are, wherever uh, uh, you, you, you find yourself. Find a Bible-believing church. This is very important, a Bible-believing church. And go and show yourself to the pastor. And tell the pastor that you want to grow in the face of God. If you go, present yourself. As you present yourself, the pastor will guide you. The pastor will lead you into the things of the spirit so that you will grow. Maybe you also want to give me a call. My number is 571-365-1251. 571-365-1251. Maybe you have some questions pertaining salvation. Please give me a call. Let us go deeper into the things of God. This is a series. I'm not done yet. I will come back again. Today we talked about the Holy Spirit part. The line or the role of the Holy Spirit in role. Or the role of the Holy Spirit when it comes to the power in the message of the gospel. If you're outside United States, you can also add the code 001-571-365-1251. So the code is 001. My number again, 571 Three six five one two five one. Then again, the message, all the program, is word and spirit. And my name is God Servant Eric. Bye bye. God bless you. Let's meet again next week. Bye. <laughs>